Helena is a 20-year-old astronaut who has lived almost her entire life in a spaceship named Orbiter 9. Because of factors like overpopulation, global warming, and a toxic environment, scientists on Earth have sent her on a mission to the supposed habitable planet Celeste. It is believed that it will take her more than 20 years to reach the planet. Initially, an infant Helena was brought to the spaceship by her parents, and they raised her there. However, three years back, a malfunction in the system caused the Orbiter 9's oxygen supply to deplete at a rapid rate. Hence, her parents took the tough decision to commit the unthinkable so that their daughter could have enough oxygen to reach the nearest outpost. In this way, Helena has spent the last three years alone on the spaceship. Her daily routine consists of watering her veggies, exercising, checking her health status, and reminiscing about her parents. By this time, she has even started having difficulties in breathing, as the oxygen supply is almost up. One day, the alarm in the spaceship starts blaring, and this worries Helena, as it is the first First time she has experienced such an event. She immediately heads over to the control room to inspect and finds out that a shuttle has adjoined her spaceship. It turns out that her distress call has finally been answered. Helena rushes to the entrance, and when the door opens, an engineer named Alex enters. She is equally stunned and happy to see him, as it has been three years since her last interaction with someone. Alex introduces himself and proceeds to examine the oxygen system, but Helena can't take her eyes off of him, possibly because she has never seen a man her age before. A few hours later, as Alex is busy with the repairs, Helena invites him for dinner, to which he agrees. Later, during dinner, Helena keeps asking a lot of questions, but for for some reason, Alex is cold. He simply mentions that he has to finish his work and return to his outpost. Alex is a f boy in space. The next day, Alex successfully repairs the oxygen system and prepares to leave. That night, while he is sleeping, Helena silently enters his room and gets on top of him. As she is busy staring, Alex wakes up and asks her to get down. But Helena, who has been alone her entire life, mentions that it might be another 20 years before she sees someone again. She then slowly kisses him, and soon, the two have coitus. The following morning, Alex packs all his belongings and departs, without even bidding Helena a proper goodbye. After leaving the spaceship, he enters a strange hallway and then makes his way upstairs. Surprisingly, he comes out of what appears to be a bunker, which is placed in the middle of the woods. Here, we get to know that the Orbiter 9 is not a spaceship after all, and the entire thing is being staged on Earth. In the next scene, Alex gets in his truck and drives through the woods, which appear to be a top-secret facility. We can clearly see that there are more bunkers like Helena's, and the entire operation is known as Project Orbiter. It's like a centrifugal Truman show. Shortly after, Alex reaches the entrance, which is heavily guarded by military personnel. That evening, he heads to the base of operations and meets the project manager, Hugo. Hugo takes out his tablet and shows some statistics to Alex, which reveals that there are in fact 10 orbiters. He claims that the progress is good, and if everything proceeds at the same pace, the real launch to Celeste may happen in the next 20 years. Despite the good news, Alex is upset, as he worries about the 10 test subjects that have been isolated in the orbiters. I wonder how many of them he's coitused. However, Hugo tells him that sacrificing 10 people for the good of humanity is the right thing to do. At night, as Alex is heading home, a news report states that it has been five years since the Celeste spaceship disaster. On that fateful night, the spaceship, which was carrying 207 crew members, experienced a sudden mechanical failure just after exiting the Earth's surface. This resulted in a fatal crash that killed everyone on board. The head engineer of the spaceship is revealed to be none other than Alex himself. Ever since the incident, he has been shrouded with guilt and sorrow, as not only did several people die, but humanity also suffered a major setback in their quest to Celeste. The next morning, Alex meets his therapist, Sylvia, who uses a highly futuristic screen to conduct her sessions. With the help of this screen, people on both sides can't see each other, and even their original voice is distorted. All they can see is a computerized wolf, which resembles their facial movements. Unable to hide his depression anymore, Alex reveals about the specifics of his job to Sylvia, and explains how he feels bad for the 10 test subjects. As days pass by, Alex starts getting more and more paranoid. He regularly watches videos and live feeds of Helena, implying that he is unable to shake her from his mind. Then, one day, he finally decides to risk it all. He gets in his car and heads to the facility. Meanwhile, in
inside the Orbiter 9. As Helena is undergoing her regular health checkup, the alarm starts blaring once again. This surprises Helena as her spaceship is far away from any outpost. Soon, the entrance door opens and a casually dressed Alex emerges from it. He immediately informs her that they are not in a spaceship and that they have to escape. But Helena, who is frozen in fear, doesn't speak a word. To prove his point, Alex takes out a hidden camera and also a microchip planted inside Helena to track her vital organs. He also tells her that he is doing this for her safety. Helena is still in disbelief, but since she has a crush on Alex, she agrees to go with him. The science may not check out, but my hormones do. Before leaving, Alex hacks the camera feed and uploads an older recording of Helena so that no one suspects their escape. Following this, the two exit the Orbiter 9. When Helena steps out of the bunker, she is momentarily dazed and has difficulty walking as she is experiencing sunlight and natural air for the first time. Alex then hides her inside his truck and somehow clears her through the entrance checkup. Later, he stops by a hill and reveals everything about the Orbiter program and how it came into existence. The program was designed to accustom a human to space so that the upcoming launch to Celeste can go smoothly. He also informs Helena that her parents are still alive, but when the latter expresses her desire to meet them, he refuses. Turns out that her parents are also part of the project. Shortly after, the two reach Alex's home, and Helena is surprised to see normal household equipment. She also experiences rain for the first time and becomes delighted. The following day, Alex visits Sylvia and informs her of what he's done. Worried about her client's safety, Sylvia shows her real self to Alex and promises to help him if things go awry. That night, Alex takes Helena out and shows her around the city. He buys a variety of meals for her, something which she has never experienced in her isolation. When Helena talks about the sea, he simply takes her to an aquarium and introduces her to different fish. The next morning, Alex leads Helena to his private office, where he has a bunch of computers set up. He explains that it is the place from which he keeps an eye on the orbiters and tracks their progress. Clearly stressed by the breach in privacy, Helena asks Alex how he could be involved in such an inhumane act, but the latter replies that it's for the betterment of humanity. With all the data and statistics gained from the orbiter project, they will be able to flawlessly send a real spaceship to select in the coming years. In the next scene, Alex takes Helena to a nightclub and introduces her to his friends. One of them is Dr. Shao, a well-known physician. He asks Helena about her hometown, but before she can reply, Alex makes up an excuse and diverts the topic. He wants to keep Helena's identity a secret at any cost. After a while, the group talks about the implications of the Orbiter program and how it can help humanity in the long run. Alex believes that the progress is good, but Dr. Shao asserts that instead of finding a new planet, people should find focus on making Earth a better place. One day, Alex notices some rashes on Helena's back and takes her to his friend, Dr. Xiao. After examining Helena on the surface, Xiao reveals that her skin is very sensitive, as if she has never been out in the sun. He then sends her for a thorough checkup and interrogates Alex about her true identity. Xiao suspects that she has something to do with the Orbiter program, and Alex finally reveals everything. That evening, while Alex is away, Helena enters his room and starts going through his files. In one of these files, she finds out something shocking. It turns out that she is not an offspring after all, but actually a clone. She then flips over some pages and finds the address of her surrogate parents. Devastated by the revelation and the fact that Alex lied to her, she gathers her belongings and heads outside to find her parents. Later, Alex arrives at home and realizes that Helena has discovered the truth about her genetics. He is visibly upset but can do nothing to find her. Elsewhere, Helena finds her parents and confronts them for abandoning her. The mother, who seems to be caring, tells Helena that although she is a clone, she has the genetics of people from different centuries, making her extremely healthy. Just then, the father approaches Helena from behind and cuffs her to the railing. He then proceeds to contact Hugo, but surprisingly, the mother knocks him out and helps Helena escape. A few hours later, she meets up with Alex and berates him for hiding the truth from her. With no words to defend himself, Alex simply apologizes and hugs her. However, the trouble has just begun. Realizing that Hugo and his people have gotten wind of the escape, Alex and Helena pack their belongings and take off. The next day, Hugo meets up with the chief benefactor of the Orbiter Project, Catherine, and briefs her about the situation. As expected, the boss is far from impressed, as one of her valuable assets has escaped. When Hugo asks her for a solution, Catherine orders him to find Helena and kill her. Elsewhere, Alex takes Helena to her longtime confidant, Sylvia, and asks for a place to stay. Being the kind woman that she 
she is, Sylvia gladly accepts. But before she can escort them out, she hears a knock at her door. Outside, she finds Hugo and two armed soldiers on the lookout for Helena. It turns out that he rummaged through Alex's apartment and found Sylvia's business card there. The men then barge inside the place and start looking around. Soon, they reach one of the therapy booths, not realizing that the couple is on the other side. Hugo then orders Sylvia to start the screen, and as she does so, Alex and Helena freeze in their place. They do not even blink, because if they do so, the wolf simulation will also move and blow their cover. This goes on for a while, and when Sylvia refuses to hand over the couple, one of the soldiers shoots her dead. This terrorizes the couple on the other side and they immediately run away. Then, an intense chase ensues on the rooftops, with the couple managing to stay one step ahead of the bad guys. However, they are eventually cornered when they come across a dead end. With no alternative left, Alex proposes to jump to another terrace. He goes first, but when it's Helena's turn, she freezes in fear and is eventually apprehended. Alex can do nothing but watch as Hugo and his men take her away. That night, a distraught Alex heads to the same nightclub and approaches his friend Xiao, who is also apparently beaten beaten up by Hugo and his men. Xiao expresses his concern for Alex, and also mentions that the test results of Helena are out. Unfortunately, she is unfit to stay in this environment, and will have to go back inside the Orbiter 9 immediately. The revelation devastates Alex, but an idea strikes his mind. In the meantime, Hugo approaches Catherine and asks her if he can reinstate Helena back into the Orbiter program. However, she refuses, claiming that it will cost them a lot of money. She then orders him to finish Helena off immediately so that the news doesn't spread elsewhere. Following the orders, Hugo starts preparing the euthanization process. But before he can end it all, Alex arrives outside the building and proposes a deal to Hugo. Although the latter has already made up his mind to kill Helena, he still calls Alex inside for the sake of their friendship. Wasting no time, Alex mentions that Helena is pregnant with his child, a child which could be of significant importance in their project. He then proposes that Helena be allowed back in the orbiter alongside him so that they can both raise their child in the environment. This would create the perfect astronaut, so that after 20 years, he or she can lead the real spaceship to Celeste. Surprisingly, Hugo likes the idea, and he lets the couple head back into the orbiter. In the final scene, 20 years have passed by. Outside Orbiter 9, a now old Hugo waits for a girl to come out of her bunker, presumably Alex and Helena's daughter. The girl smiles at someone behind her, and then looks into the sky. The movie ends as the spaceship, ready to take off for Celeste is heard, indicating that the experiment was a success. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.